Okay, let's finish this chapter four. We're getting to the important part. August arrived with the deepening of the summertime splendors of New Hampshire. Early in the month, we had two days of light, steady rain, which aroused a final fullness everywhere. The branches of the old trees, which had been familiar to me, either half denuded or completely gaunt during the winter terms at Devon, now seemed about to break from their storms of leaves. Little discarded patches of ground revealed that they had been gardens all along. The nondescript underbrush around the gymnasium and the river broke into color. There was a latent freshness in the air, as though spring were returning in the middle of summer. But examinations were at hand. I wasn't as ready for them as I wanted to be. The Suicide Society continued to meet every evening, and I continued to attend, because I didn't want Finney to understand as I understood him. Sorry, understand me as I understood him. I can't have Finney suspect that I know his secret plan to sabotage me. And I also didn't want to let him ex uh, excel me in this, even though I knew it didn't matter whether he showed me up at the tree or not, because it was what you had in your heart that counted. And I had detected that Finney's was a den of lonely, selfish ambition. He was no better than I was, no matter who won all the contest. You're not better than me. We're, we're, we're the same. A French examination was announced for one Friday late in August. Finney and I studied for it in the library Thursday afternoon. I went over vocabulary lists and he wrote messages. Je ne give d'un pas about le François. Les filets in France ne wear pas la pantaloons. And passed them with great seriousness to me as a de me Of course, I didn't get any work done. Phineas is distracting me again, you know, writing his wrong French. <laughs> After supper, I went to our room to try again. Phineas came in a couple minutes later. Arise, he began airily. Senior overseer, charter member, Elwin Leper Lepelier, has announced his intentions to make the leap this very night, to qualify, to save his face at last. Remember, you can't be in the, the secret society unless you jump from the tree, and you have to jump every night, or else, I guess. I didn't believe it for a second. Leper Lepelier would go down paralyzed with panic on any sinking troop ship before making such a jump. Finney had put him up to it, to finish me for good on the exam. In other words, he's trying to distract me so much he doesn't want me to study. I turned around with elaborate resignation. If he jumps out of that tree, I'm Mahatma Gandhi. All right, agreed Finney absently. He had a way of turning cliches inside out like that. Come on, let's go. We've got to be there. You never know. Maybe he will do it this time. Oh, for God's sake. I slammed closed the French book. What's the matter? What a performance. His face was completely questioning and candid. Studying, I snarled. Studying, you know, books, work, examinations. Yeah. He waited for me to go on, as though he didn't see what I was getting at. Oh, for God's sake, you don't know what I'm talking about. No, of course not. Not you. I stood up and slammed the chair against the desk. Okay, we go. We watched the little lily liver lapelier not jump from the tree, and I ruined my grade. He looked at me with an interested, surprised expression. You want to study? I began to feel a little uneasy about this mildness of his, so I sighed heavily. Never mind, forget it. I know, I joined the club, I'm going, what else can I do? Don't go, he said very simply and casually, as though he were saying, nice day. He shrugged. Don't go, what the hell, it's only a game. I stopped halfway across the room, and now I looked at him. What do you mean, I muttered. What he meant was clear enough but I was groping for what lay behind his words, for what his thoughts could possibly be. I might have asked, who are you then? Instead, I was facing a total stranger. I didn't know you needed to study, he said simply. I didn't think you ever did. I thought it just came to you. It seemed to me that he had made some kind of parallel between my studies and his sports. He probably thought anything you were good at came without effort. He didn't know yet that he was unique. I couldn't quite achieve a normal speaking voice. If I need to study, then so do you. Me? He smiled faintly. Listen, I could study forever, and I'd never break C. But it's different for you. You're good. You really are. If I had a brain like that, I'd, I'd have my head cut open so people could look at it. Now, wait a second. He put his hands in the back of a chair and leaned uh, toward me. I know, we kid around a lot and everything, but you have to be serious sometimes about something. If you're really good at something, I mean, there's nobody or hardly anybody who's as good as you are. And you've got to be serious about that. Don't mess around, for God's sake. He frowned disapprovingly at me. Why didn't you say you had to study before? 
don't move from that desk. It's going to be all A's for you. So in other words, Phineas is saying, oh, I thought you and studying, you and you know, being smart in class was like me and sports. You can kind of just do it basically like that. It didn't require a ton of effort. You have to actually work hard. And Gene's like, well, yeah, of course. And Phineas is like, oh, okay. He's like, he's like I don't know. He's, Phineas basically said, I'm not that smart. Not when it comes to school stuff. I'll never get better than a C, no matter what I do. So I just don't worry about it, essentially. Oh, but you need to study, though, Gene. Okay, well, Gene, you sit here and you study and you get all A's then. But Gene says, wait a minute, I said, without any reason. It's okay. I'll oversee old leper. I know he's not going to do it. He was at the door. Wait a minute, I said more sharply. Wait just a minute. I'm coming. No, you aren't, pal. You're going to study. Never mind my studying. You th uh, think you've done enough already? Yes. I let this drop curtly to bar him from telling me what to do about my work. He let it go at that and went on the door ahead of me, whistling off key. We followed our gigantic shadow across the campus, and Phineas began talking in wild French to give me a little extra practice. I said nothing, my mind exploring the new dimensions of isolation around me. Any fear I had ever had of the tree was nothing beside this. It wasn't my neck, but my understanding which was menaced. He had never been jealous of me for a second. Now I knew that there was, ne there was and never could have been any rivalry between us. It was not the same, I, I was not of the same quality as he. I couldn't stand this. We reached the others loitering around the base of the tree, and Phineas began exuberantly to throw off his clothes, delighted by the fading glow of the day, the challenge of the tree, the competitive tension of all of us. He lived and flourished in such moments. Let's go, you and me, he called. A new idea struck him. <clears throat> we'll go together, a double jump. Neat, eh? Right before that, on the way there, Gene's thinking in his mind, what's he thinking about you all? This whole time, he's been wrong, apparently. He thought Phineas was secretly working to undermine him and keep him from studying so that way Gene couldn't be, you know, couldn't win the rivalry and stuff like that. When actually all along, Phineas just wanted to have fun with his best friend. That's it. So there's a lot of assumptions happening here with Gene. And one of the reasons why I wanted y'all to read this, because I know it's not as much fun as the Hunger Games, I know. But one of the reasons why I want y'all to read this is a lot of drama in, for example, Shakespeare, you all. You'll read some fancy Shakespeare in high school. And a lot of Shakespeare drama comes from misunderstandings. This character thinks this other character said this or did this, but actually they didn't. But since they don't just go talk to them and communicate, the misunderstanding grows and grows and grows. And a lot of times in like Shakespeare and stuff, it grows into a tragedy. You know, people end up uh, getting killed. Uh, terrible things happen. Well, one reason why we do we read stuff like Shakespeare, y'all, isn't because of the fancy language. It's because the themes apply to real life. This, about a high school boy assuming the wrong thing about somebody else and building up this mean narrative in his mind, well, there's a reason why I want you guys to read this and kind of understand it. Very soon, you all go to high school. And high school, in a lot of ways, can be a jungle, like it says in the book. It can be stressful. It can be intimidating. You can feel like you're under attack, or you can feel very nervous, or some of the anxiety. You can also feel like you're being betrayed by one of your friends. But maybe you actually aren't. Maybe it's not as bad as you think, like that kind of stuff. Because it's very easy for us to get in our own heads, you all, and start assuming really uh, bad intentions from other people. But sometimes you got to take a step back. Sometimes you got to try and communicate. Sometimes you got to try and be kind in like, how you look at other people. Um, so that's one of the big reasons why I wanted you all to read this book. There's some other stuff, too, uh, but I want you to kind of think about that a little bit, how Gene has been wrong this whole time. Uh, about this stuff. And Phineas is actually a good-natured, goofy, slacker, rule-breaker kind of guy. And that's about it. He has no sinister motives. He isn't trying to sabotage Gene. So so now that Gene understands that, I guess problem solved and everything's okay. No more conflict in the book. Uh-oh, we're only on chapter four. Hmm. I told you something important is going to happen. So Phineas has a big idea. Let's do a double jump. You and me. Best friends, buddy. You and me, Gene. Let's go do that. None of this mattered now. I would have listlessly agreed to anything. He started up the wooden rungs, and I began climbing behind, up to the, high, uh, the limb high over the bank. Phineas ventured a little way along it, holding a thin nearby branch for support. Come out a little way, he said, and then we'll jump side by side. The countryside was striking from here. 
a deep green sweep of uh, playing fields and bordering shrubbery, and the school stadium, white and miniature looking across the river. From behind us, the last long rays of light played across the campus, accentuating every slight undulation of the land, emphasizing the separateness of each bush. Beautiful imagery there, you all. Looking at across this gorgeous landscape, they're up so high, it looks almost like things are kind of miniature, like over there. Um, just really pretty stuff. But remember, they're high up in the tree. Holding firmly to the trunk, I took a step toward him. And then my knees bent, and I jounced the limb. Finney, his balance gone, swung his head around to look at me for an instant with extreme interest. And then he tumbled sideways, broke through the little branches below, and hit the bank, the ground, with a sickening, unnatural thud. It was the first clumsy physical action I had ever seen him make. With unthinking sureness, I moved down to the limb and jumped into the river. Every trace of my fear of this forgotten. In chapter 4. What did Gene just do to his best friend? They were up there. Finney said, hey, let's go do this together. And you think, oh, Gene made a big breakthrough. Now he understands that he was, you know, kind of being an unfair person. And then when Finney is out on that narrow, thin uh, branch, Phineas is there, or sorry, Gene's there, and Gene, just a little bit, wobbles the branch some, so then Phineas loses his balance because he wasn't expecting it. And then Phineas looks back at him for a second, then he falls off, down, 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 to the ground. And then Gene just jumps off into the river, and he says, oh, my old fear and stuff, it's gone from my mind. Hmm. In chapter 5, you all, we'll find out what exactly just happened, what Gene just did to his best friend. Anyway, hope you guys have a good rest of your day and a good weekend. Um, some reminders, make sure you are all caught up in your notes. On Monday, we're going to have a note check on chapters 1 through 4, um, and you have your open note quiz on chapters 1 through 4 um, on Monday, okay? So be ready for that uh, on Monday. Also, just in general, make sure you're doing well with your independent reading um, projects. That is due sooner than you think um, for that, okay? So anyway, you guys take care. See you later. Bye.